Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReviewRelease.com. CardsReviewRelease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the CHOCOBROS. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And this week we're going to talk about basically all the news that has been popping up. There's been a lot of it. Uh, the LQ schedule has been released. We have some of the erratas that have come in, which are interesting. Uh, we had the Nagoya tournament, which you know spurred the erratas uh, and kind of brought them to light. So let's just jump right in. We'll start with the easy one, uh, the erratas. So those are you know set in stone; they already happened. Not a whole lot to talk about. But do you find any of those to be surprising? Or I mean, the, it seems like the cards should have been worded the way they are. That's why you know they got eroded. But do you think it was like a mistake, or they saw what happened and said that doesn't make sense and decided to switch it? Well. So no no actually causing a match loss mm-hmm. or a game loss like actually being relevant was really surprising to me. I mean we, it's been around you know obviously forever and it's not really been that relevant, but possibly maybe, maybe it has been. Maybe we just didn't I mean people don't really talk about it that much. Um I don't think it's that relevant of a change. Sarah's pretty much non-existent as far as relevant um mm-hmm. because it says characters you know, you can just choose their, like, backups. Yeah, backups your, a lot, yeah. Your, your backups are already dull or whatever. Um, so it's pretty irrelevant. Alpha is a pretty good change, um, for sure. And I am, I've been playing around with the deck with Alba, so I'm, I'm happy to see this, but I was playing Alba anyway. Um, this makes Alba a little bit better, but I don't think it makes her, like, like people were freaking out, like, oh, my God, Alba's completely fixed now. It's like, well, she's good. She's re- she's she's really good, but and to be honest, I think I read her as up to because when I played her, I played Mono Lightning recently. I'm pretty sure there was a turn where I had uh, both Diana and Alba out, and someone had just one thing. I was like, "Oh, it's all your thing," and they're like, "Oh yeah, sure, makes sense." <laughs> so well, you didn't do anything wrong. Didn't, apparently. didn't mean to. Yeah, right. <laughs> I knew and my and, and my Alba happens to be in Japanese, so oh, so you were, <laughs> you can have both. I was just doing it you the right way anyway. Of, one of each in your hand, like, huh? Which effect do I need? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Well, there's only one reason to do it. Right, right. Uh, one good way to do it. But yeah, so I think this is a, a big deal. I think that people have kind of made it seem like the sky is falling, that this type of thing keeps happening. But my understanding is this type of stuff happens all the time in, in bigger games, too. Um, so this is... Uh, I'm much more sad about Death Machine <laughs> being one Death letter Machine, off yeah. completely changing the card. So this is just kind of like the the what's happening right now between this um, some disappointment in the LQs um, stuff like that is kind of just like the the straw that are, is breaking the camel's back for everyone. Um, yeah, these erratas aren't that big of a deal. If you look at them from a new player standpoint or something like that, it's really not that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important that we catch them. We're glad that we caught them. Uh, it's unfortunate Richie that was... someone got a game, you know. It is. It is. Richie, and Richie let us know that um, she and the team are working in the future so that this type of stuff doesn't happen. Um, and that's really good positive news. Um, that being said, people are just sick of so many things going wrong, like left and right. And so they've been venting on places like the US page, the fans page. Usually that type of venting stays off of the US page. It's more like a fans page thing. Um, but it's been all over the US page lately. Um so the Rattas are a big deal as far as the way people are perceiving the game. As far as actual gameplay goes, Alba got better. Ob- obviously, all these cards got better. Yeah. Um, I think the only one that will actually matter is Alba. Mm-hmm. Um, and I hope that this is the last of them. Well, who knows? Maybe yeah. No-No it was in some crazy broken deck and they just made a mistake because of the wording of it, but would have done better, maybe. I mean, <laughs> No-No's part well, of a lot of interesting combos and synergy, so... Maybe I was, was going to say, we'll leave, it, we'll leave it to Chris to figure out. Yeah, right, we'll Matiski, worry, yeah, I know we'll Matiski was like, that. yeah, my card. Because <laughs> he really wanted yeah. what the list was. But uh, yeah, I think right. it's it's like a death by uh, many paper cuts type thing, where the, none of the things individually are that big of a deal. Some things maybe more than others, but you put... Yeah, there's there you the, go. <laughs> there's, the, there's the worst paper cut. It hurts so bad. <laughs> it's right on the knuckle. Oh, but, right when you were saying that, I was thinking about how many of the paper that really hurts. But yeah, having all those kind of stack up over time is probably, you know, it's it's a composite worry that everyone's having now. So Yeah, Death Machine's a bigger deal. Uh, people are upset about Death Machine. It wasn't broken. I know there are some people in the community that think it was broken. Uh, there are people in the community that actually thought it was bad. Those people are probably far worse, <laughs> far more wrong than the people that thought it was broken. It was pretty good. Um, there, but Most of all, it was people, what I wanted 
everything I wanted. <laughs> it was. It was. It reminded me uh, so much of a Magic card. And so it was a lot of the, yes, a lot of the cards in Magic I love. I came from Magic, um, and it was it really excited me as that type of like Magic the Gathering type of card. Mm-hmm. The problem is that Final Fantasy is just such a better game, such <laughs> a better game that. Assuming they fix this type of stuff, um, I, I could never see myself going back. And, I, and I've seen a lot of posts where people try and go back and play, and they're just like, "Wow, what's yeah. such a different game?" But but Shout Death Machine nice. reminded <laughs> Death Machine reminded me such of a Magic the Gathering card, similar in the way that like Ark does. It's another reason I like Ark. It's very, it feels very much like Sphinx's Revelation, only slightly different. Um, whereas like this, it's gaining you a lot of life because it's killing your opponent's board. You're drawing cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, Obviously, you use Sphinx's Revenue in their turn for the most part. Um, so that's kind of why this is a, a little bit worse. Uh, this card would be, actually, in my opinion, way too good if you could use it at any point. Um, That'd be absurd. Yeah. It yeah, it's, it's, I think it's already very good. But Especially because you could draw up to past hand size, start your turn, and then have like a million cards. Yeah, for sure. Which is probably so, why you can't cast it on that turn. <laughs> that's, that's my transition, people's feelings of... Uh, the Arata's into the LQ season. So there's uh, been some mixed feelings about LQs, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our particular issues was actually remedied today, uh, as of this recording. It was only a couple hours ago, uh, where the Miami LQ got changed from the day of Toronto. Now, that's our bias, because we want to go to a Miami LQ, and you guys are going to Toronto. Uh, I, dis- I disagree. However, I was going to say, but however, having LQs the same weekend of a Crystal Cup, period, I think it should not happen. Right. Should not happen. Like that's that, happen. that's the underlying issue. Right? It should be a blacked out date when you're yes. choosing your LQ. This weekend is not an LQ possibility. Period. And it it goes beyond just people qualifying and like wanting to play in multiple tournaments. It's also for coverage purposes. People who might be watching streams of Crystal Cups are going to be at these LQs. They're the same crowd, generally speaking. So right. So you're you losing more, viewership. Yeah, you're losing viewership. You're losing attendance at events. It's just not. An intelligent move, in my opinion. Both yeah, ways. Just... Bo- both ways. There might be an LQ close to a Crystal Cup that you decide to go to the LQ instead because you feel like you're going to spike it a little easier. Mm-hmm. Um, so it affects attendance both ways. And then it affects not just uh, viewership, but when a new player jumps in the stream and viewership is down 50% because everyone's playing in that competitive weekend. Yeah. Uh, it, it can snowball, I, for sure. For sure. Um, and it's just not acceptable. It's very simple. When LQ... Um, emails go out, they need to have blackout dates. And, and, and what is it, two weekends at the blackout? That's it, right? Because there, uh, there's wave like one, that. wave or two, wave one, and wave yeah. three. Right. Yeah. So you only really got to blackout two weekends. Um, I guess like, maybe it gets sticky if you're looking at somewhere like California when you have like five or six shops that might hold an LQ. Mm-hmm. And then like, how do you space them out? Uh, yeah, well, California doesn't have a crystal cup, so they don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Yes, but point being that like you want to make sure that they're taken care of. No, but at the same time, they have enough players to where two LQs on the same weekend or even on the same day ne- isn't necessarily a huge deal. Yeah, if you separate like, North and SoCal, because like they right, have two correct. large communities, and th- that's a reasonable distance. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited that LQs were announced. I some people found the issue with there being wave two and wave three that just they were saying, well, we don't know how many waves. Why wasn't it announced? I mean, I think it's similar to last year, right? Didn't we have different waves last year? Maybe we only had two waves yeah, last year. Yeah, I think though. it was only two waves. Like, in their defense, I would like to know how many waves there are and, like, what the dates are going to be, at least. Like, the here's the first LQ, here's the last LQ. Like, work with it. But I think freaking out is a little much. Okay, but, so, I, again, that's fair. But also, this is this is the, the, the Camel's Backs thing here because we still don't know about Gen Con. I listen. I can't touch that topic. So, <laughs> <laughs> does it frust- does it frustrate you? Like, it, but but you're not the only one. But they, see, that's what I'm saying. So then, when we, you don't know what LQs are, so you can't request off for LQs. Like, there's a whole rant we could have about the scheduling of all this. But like, I actually have to know stuff like you know with with nationals coming up, so that I can request off. Assuming I even make nationals, um, who knows? The, it depends on the number of waves we get. I understand that like like um cities that had crystal cups didn't get wave one 
uh, LQs. I think that does not make any sense whatsoever. I can't even understand the logic of it because if the if the reason that we don't get an LQ is that you had a CC where four people could qualify, but the pricing at the pricing at that the possible worlds invite draw so many people are. Ar- yeah, it's not, it's not a local crystal. Cup. It's not a local qualifier. It's, it's a, not. It's a regional it's, qualifier for the entire continent. Like, it would literally be like if Magic was like, "Well, th- you guys aren't getting a PTQ because you had a, a GP." That would never happen. Yeah, that would never. You would never be excluded. And and to you know, Tampa could have played better. We should have played better. Miami should have played better. Orlando should have played better. But the fact is, is that no matter how close, you know. Ali, I got or Alex got. None of us received a, an invite to nationals, so we lost an LQ spot and never had a. Sh- and, and didn't get, I guess we had a shot at LQ uh, at nationals? But you get the point. We didn't take any spots for nationals, but we did lose an LQ spot. And even and, if, even if the top four were all from Florida, it doesn't matter. It's per, it's purely locational well, based. It's not the, right, like, right, right. So that's that's a it's opportunity based, not right. So I'm not trying to say it's correlated. Based. Right. I'm just. Or, or results based. I'm just simply saying that that's actually proof that it somewhat matters because people will travel for these events. There is a draw to them, and it's not just national qualification. It's the it's the first place trophy. Okay, that's cool, but it's really that that world's qualifying um, thing. Whereas I think last year, I don't think people made that big of a deal if if you didn't get an LQ because you got a CC. It's it's different. I think this year because of the draw of the CCs. Um, it's a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, so us not getting one because we had a LQ does not make any sense. And you know, places like Tampa, places like, uh, Portland, we're going to be watching to watch to, to see if places that got a CC during wave two, get a wave two one to, you know, because that's, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, and maybe that's, again, that's just us being frustrated. Um, because we, especially Tampa, I have to say, we really pour a lot into this community yeah. um, on all aspects of the game. We try to do what we can, so it's been frustrating. Yeah, I don't think I have anything to add without going into other topics like Gen Con and things like that that I wish were you know, publicized already, but we'll leave that alone for now. <laughs> uh, wait, sorry, what were you going to say? I was just going to ask if you're, if you're going to Gen Con or you're not confirmed. I have tickets. I'm having some conversations to talk about possible housing. Have, although I'm actually a week late on a reply for that, so I got to check in again. Uh, I want to go, but I need to know that there's a reason to go. Like if it's just like if the events are just first place worlds, that's an expensive LQ. <laughs> so you're saying if if but, they were to offer national invites, I think if would... there's national invites, there's a lot more. Likely have a chance I'm almost go. positive that there are no national. In fact, I know for a fact I read that there are no national invites. It's just literally two world spots for two world assuming spots. first place of two separate tournaments. Correct. Oof. Uh, it'll yeah. be it'll be a tough sell, but I, I, the event I, is awesome itself. But I mean, so is yeah. I'm but do you it. want to spend the whole time playing <laughs> Final Fantasy if you're going to Gen Con? That's also yeah. Yeah. So there, right. there's a lot of conversations with that, but I need to know more information before I can make a like sure. final judgment call. To see if it's, like sure. if it's a sweet like if i think i really like i think if it was an awesome format i might give it a shot just because it like, well i mean what i would like to see is like hey this is not finalized but this is the format that we're thinking of um we'll let you know if bike, change. Yeah. but then you know people complain oh, well, oh you told us it's gonna be fair. this and you switched it and... no but you didn't you said that this is not finalized it may it may change right, right. no i agree just be <laughs> upfront yeah i agree but uh well events that we know about and actually are finished uh the nagoya cup in japan uh what do you think so we'll just start off at the first place list here uh well actually i guess we start off with the format so it was a three-day tournament day one was six rounds the first three rounds were with deck a and the fur and the second three rounds were with deck b that's an interesting way to do it i've never thought of and it appears that they had not a fan yeah (laughs) Uh, neither am i but uh we it, look, it appears to be that they can't share cards, you know, so normal rules for when you pick multiple decks. Well, uh, but we only have one somewhat. deck to go based on. <laughs> there, it, it used to be kind of during the older formats 
where you could have one saving in one deck and two in another. Right. And this one, you can only, if you have one saving in one deck, you can have zero in the other. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so you... Veritas, for example, if you have two Veritas in one deck, you can have zero in the other. All right. So, so what do you think of the first place list? We'll start there. Uh, so Kaka won. Uh, we know him from yep. the first Worlds and many other Japanese tournaments. And for many, tournaments. many other Masters did, tournaments. Did he go to Worlds uh, last year as well? I believe so. I want to say that we were we had a bet on him. I, I think I think so, yeah. Anyway, very yeah. accomplished player. Uh, he was on, it appears, Ice, Fire, kind of a Final Fantasy VI slash... Had three drop Umaro. Yeah, had the Umaro, had Big Celeste, Lock, uh, didn't have any of the other kind of... It had Banana Sid, but it didn't have, like, Setzer. Uh, did it have the backup Setzer, I believe? It did. Yeah, yeah of course. Hidden back there. Yeah. Uh, Sid Alstein, one of, Renella, one of, Genesis, one of, Duncan, one of. <laughs> Pretty sweet, interesting list. Sabin, two it. of. Yeah, Sabin, two of, Cloud, two of. Sid Rain's two of. It's got three going. last, well, three Sephiroth, so... We're yeah, I mean, I think the list the right is... Good. I mean, to say it's good is very, like... Wow, I mean, it just won the tournament, so sure, it's probably good. Mm -hmm. um, I I mean, I don't know. It, it seems all right. This is one of the kind of decks that we were testing against for the Tampa Crystal Cup. Mm -hmm. um, we were playing a little bit around with the three-drop Cecil. Uh, not Cecil, but uh, Celeste. Yep. Um, I like Umaro, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I like this deck. I'm a fan of decks with Sephiroth. I believe that it's generally not a very good card um but you if you if you play it at the right time you can just win the game so it's one of the cards i fear the most but then it's like well if they don't play at the right time it literally does nothing or if you're able to play around it sometimes you're able to play around it mm -hmm. by keeping your hand size at one or three um obviously they still get value at three but like if you respond using those two cards with a summon or something like that it can be pretty devastating like they just they're only getting one card yeah. seven well, they get no cards if you use the two cards to pay for the oh, one. Oh, if you're using the two to pay for the one. Yeah. Right. Like, if you were to Odin something else, like, if you, you for for example, um, then they just got absolutely no value um, out of their Sephiroth, and they paid seven for an 8K. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can recover from that. Like, if the deck's firing, if, mo if both decks are firing on, on decent cylinders there, yeah, the so game's over. With. The other list was a Earth Wind. Yurian J list with one Yurian J, one seven drop Phoenix, Luminous. I like Lula, how you called it a Yurian J list. <laughs> I, I well, I saw the Yurian J, and then I look. We can't as call I, it a Phoenix as list I or a Yurian J deck. I saw one Phoenix. It's like okay, I guess. Not. You can't even call it a, a Yur uh, like um like. <laughs> I, I don't know what to call this. Yeah, I don't know either. But so there's a card in there. If I'm seeing it correctly, we're, we're gonna zoom in here. Oh, that, okay, that's Noctis. Never mind. Were you thinking it was Warrior of Light? I thought it was the six drop Warrior of Light that brings back a standard unit, and I was going to ask where the standard unit is. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, the backgrounds are very similar, but, but okay, yeah, no, no, that's a, it's that's a, a Noctis. It's okay. the one of Noctis well, to go with the two Cecil and three Cactar. It's an interesting list. Um, three Hecaton, I, I respect it. Three Veritas for sure. And and a Chaos, so that's important to know that that and he's gone to yeah. five dark cards, which is a lot. But I, do you even count a Veritas when you're going over dark cards? Because really. like, usually when you get cards stuck in your hand, it's the reason that dark sucks. And if you have cards stuck in your hand and it matters, it's because your opponent has swords on the field. So you just like play your Veritas, and then the next they kill, and the next turn you play your Veritas, and you just rinse and repeat. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't play like five or six Veritas in my deck, but <laughs> three seems very reasonable. I like so. that a lot of these Japanese lists, the uh, Earthwind ones, are running the Calbrena as well. I've always liked that card as a tech card. I just sometimes don't have the balls to play it. <laughs> so sure, yeah. It's, yeah it's, uh, there's some matchups that just don't enjoy that card. Like I'm, Yeah, like most water decks ice. can't deal with it. Yeah, that too. Like Ice, it's pretty decent against. I mean, they can dull it, sure, but for the most part, they have to right. They have to have the Duke out, but this deck also has Hecaton. So, like, you can just and even then, that. like, you block their Genesis all day. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I, really I mean, like the Calbrena. Luminous Puma. I mean, we've sure. seen that a lot of locals. We've been seeing it in tournaments. Probably my more. second or third favorite card in the whole game right now, actually. It's, yeah, the options it gives, like instant speed specials or just For like, sure. Uh, just a threat 
of an instant speed special. Yeah, or or being able to get like backups back mm-hmm. has been really relevant for me. Like, like especially in this deck where you're discarding your Shantota earlier or like, your Jito, like actually just like those me, cards you can, back uh, is... easily loop Minfilia with that card. Yeah. Uh, so you just go, yeah. Okay. Assuming you have a way to break it yeah, without... Yeah, there's not a easy way to break it here unless you're... Right. Dudes. Right, and I was surprised, honestly, that there there isn't an Undead Princess in this deck. Yeah, if there's an Undead Princess, that'd be pretty sweet with, uh, you know, Luminous Puma. With, uh, well, I guess if you want to loop those three, you know, it's got to be just those three. Right. But no, that's, it's a sweet list. I like it. Uh, it has the one of Mass Woman, which is close to our hearts. <laughs> so... I, I like it. Uh, do we have you seen any of the other lists anywhere? I have not been able to find the rest of the top eight. Or I haven't seen the list. I haven't heard like where the lists are or anything like that. If we want to flash over to the RVA Battlegrounds uh, Battlegrounds uh, event, I think it's interesting that um, Water uh, Lightning took first and second place there. Okay, and that's uh, something really uh, cool to look at. It, it's uh, first place was Knights. Which was like pretty awesome, and in second place is uh, Knights too. A little bit different build, but are these on FF decks or where are these? They are on FF decks, and then uh, the the boys over at RVA um, oh, right, also posted them. Okay. I saw these. Yep. Yeah, they're they're interesting. I like the the Garnet with the Medine in the deck. Um, there's just like some cool stuff going on in this deck. It's got the five drop Yuna, a lot of EX bursts, the seventeen EX bursts in this deck. With, it's actually it's a 17 EX burst deck that's playing Lightning that's not playing Odin. Correct, because it's playing Rema, I guess. But yeah. I could see easily playing Odin in this deck as well. This deck is really cool, though. So Yuri's really it's, interesting. It's a, it's a Lightning deck that's not playing Lua. So props to uh, <laughs> Cool Step deck, Johnny Dreyer. Yes. Yugiri Frosty is an here. interesting card. I guess it, you can follow up mid for sure. with it and just get like a damage in or something. Uh, for sure. Huh. Yeah, this is interesting. I This is one I would like probably pick up and play, fail a couple times, stare, Have at a good time, a couple, though. stare at it for about an hour, play it again, win a couple games, and then move on. <laughs> it's it's sweet, but man, oh man. That's a, that's a good analysis of what would happen with this deck. Yeah, it's it's yeah. good. It's cool. It looks fun. Like, I'd be playing Medine uh, and just asking myself why I'm not playing Warriors of Light or something. I, hate... I, I don't think I can see myself playing Garland without Brave, to be fair, but... Uh, Garland, the... the one that, when it blocks, yeah, it gets bigger. Without who? Without giving it Brave. How would you normally give it Brave? Um, in Earth. <laughs> Oh, with wall. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. I mean, no, it's a sweet list, though. I'm definitely not taking anything. For away. sure. I like... No, no, I like this list quite a bit. I find it interesting. All right, they're playing two Rufus with three Reno, but none of the other backups. So they're just all in on just those two. That's well, the other one can't break itself. True. So you can't, like, do the Rufus combo. Mm-hmm. So, I mean... Fact that in with the... You, you attack with the rain, trigger the thing, and then kill them with the rest... Other combo seems pretty cool, but yeah, it's pretty sweet. I like this. Yeah, the Yugiri is an interesting card that I've never tried. I think it's got to be there's a follow up to the Medine, right? Oh, actually, I didn't realize the other Water Lightning list is completely different. Oh yeah, it's it's another it's another Illua deck that has knights in it but like i said it's not a knight's deck it's different it's more of a nine deck than anything yeah, so there's Illua, there's no medine there's no yugiri uh it there's no agarius searcher there's a additional cloud of darkness yeah these are fairly like they're very similar but they're subtly different for sure huh. yeah uh, oh it doesn't have the rufus uh package with the turkey not at all yeah. interesting okay so they're cool list there's a lot of cool stuff happening out there um I do wish we had the, the Japan list, but they're not in yet. Um, there's just nothing going on until Portland, right? When's Portland in two weeks? Well, one thing that is going on is this spicy Wind Ice Knit Hog deck. <laughs> did uh, you, did you click it. on this one? Look at the no. backup line. So it's playing Sherlata and like the North Stalin package, but also Sid 2 with Evokers, which is kind of interesting. Like, if you Can you imagine opening Sid 2 and North Stalin? Like, that ramp's absurd. And it's got the dark package with lots of 
Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, hold on. It's playing Kucha spell without Galdas. Well, yeah. First off, it's searchable. Is it? And second off, it does dole and freeze. Okay, it's searchable. That's... Okay. But still, that looks so weird to me. It must be the only ice FFCC backup. It is. Um, That's two. Because otherwise you could play the mask, I think? Or is that FFL? No, it's FFL. Yeah, this is the only FFC backup price. Okay. Less, yeah, I've, I've looked less into freaked out, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this deck seems really cool. Um, See, this is one where I would play it once, get my butt pushed in, then stare at it some more, and then play it for like two I would, weeks. <laughs> I, would make some yeah, I would make some changes in that like, I would play... But you have Charlotta to cast Phoenix and Chaos to cast Phoenix. I would just jam three Phoenix and then cut the, the Fenas for Dark Fenas. Steep. Yeah, maybe. You know, never know. What we really got to do is drop the Dark and put in... Well, Veritas is kind of a big loss. But put in some Yuna and some Valfor, the Light Yuna. <laughs> yeah, I can see With that. The Fena. Mm. I could see you doing that specifically. <laughs> <laughs> now we're playing my style. Get to Valfor yeah. or Sid 2. Oof. But yeah, this deck is pretty cool. I'll Maybe I'll play around with this deck. More. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, what were you saying? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know if there's anything else um, happening before Portland. My understanding is that there's not. Is that correct? I can't think of a particular event. Uh, no, okay, I'm sorry. One more list we got to look at here. The Ice Water Monsters. The ICW Water Monsters. Uh, that is somewhat familiar. <laughs> Except for the Squall. That's a little weird. We were testing somewhat similar list to this for the Fire Crystal Cup. Uh, um, except they've said all steam without really... I mean, they have Scale Toad, I guess. But... Scale Toad's really good, but yeah. They're missing some... Like, where's Goblin? Yeah, there's no goblin. There's no I wonder if he lost to Zidane because he didn't have a goblin. That'd be interesting. <laughs> uh, Adam, if you're listening, let us know. I want to know if Zidane's uh, what killed you. Oh, on uh, the stank list or stonk? I can never remember yeah. his last name. But that, I mean, I don't know, know if that's who he lost to. You're right, but like this deck seems very weak to turn one Zidane. Yeah, I mean you have to you want to like smack that down, but oh, there's but yeah. It's, yeah, it's not enough. No, anyway, sorry. I just that was uh, one that was kind of <laughs> again close to our heart. <laughs> so, right. So yeah. Nothing so, until Portland. Uh, what? Yeah, I can't think of when is Portland. I don't know. No, yeah, let's look it up. All right. <laughs> not today. No, you not know, today. actually, actually, don't look it up. Watch this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something freaky. Uh, you're not. You're. Not, uh, hold on. So let me share my screen with you because I want, I want it to be live so. It, actually happens on camera all right oh we just got to see all your friends and <laughs> google flights oh tampa <laughs> oh this is my upcoming flight okay that's fair that's not what i wanted to do. i want to see if people just guessed that i wanted to leave some all right i'm gonna guess just because oh. i swear they're so freaky i'm gonna guess that it is somewhere between may 17th and May 20th. <laughs> like. Uh, Portland, Oregon, right? So that's yeah. be... What day were you guessing? May 17th through May 20th. Like the Monday through Friday. So it would be May 18th and May 19th. Um, it appears to be May 11th and May 12th. Oh, man. Google let me down. <laughs> they want to fly me. They want to fly me there the weekend after. Usually, I swear when you when you pop oh, up. Oh, hundred percent. Listen, you. we know this. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, gonna be in May in two weekends. So not this weekend, but the following weekend. So nothing major this weekend. Right. So um, we'll probably save our predictions for next week. Yeah. Um, sure. when we have Cody with us, we are moving our schedules around. Um, yes. so that we will be able to have this where all three of us. Um. Are able to attend at the same time, so more consistently, anyway. Yeah, more consistently at the very least. Which is yeah, not saying a whole lot, but because <laughs> it doesn't, it's not so consistent now. But well, yeah, and there were reasons why we didn't want to. 
Oh, we delayed our cast for a little bit, like. You know, 100%. These, these issues that were happening was very hard to be positive about. So we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing on and. Uh, yeah. Oh, sex plane Imperio with Trace Velger and Veritas. Oh. Whew. No. That makes me happy. <laughs> Just another one of those from yeah yeah the ice lightning cutie patootie deck is what it's called. It's uh, Imperio searching for Ace Velger or Zidane on entry and then Veritas when it dies. Ooh, That's that, cute. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, so thanks for joining us. Um, we'll we'll see you guys next week again. Hopefully, we'll have the full cast next week. We will uh, we'll have, have the full cast next week. There's no try. There's only two. <laughs> Yes, Cody. Yes, that's a good. That's a good <laughs> idea too. Um, and then also something I wanted to talk to um, you guys kind of about, and I'll talk to Cody and Zach. Is that they'd be cool to have like a, a live stream of Portland, um, just kind of uh, our our own little our own little separate uh, cast of it. Um, oh, you mean like us streaming the event? Yeah, which we were just complaining about splitting viewership, so we'll have to talk about the morality of that one. But <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so I've been your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I've been Zach Burrell. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuck and Rose podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And, of course, don't forget to check out com and use promo code CHOCOBROS to get 10% off your next order.